just stay on this side. And Hi guys! We are live on a Tuesday. This is a little different for Paper Pumpkin Live. Um, Chris and Janet, uh, my aunt, Chris's mom, are hard at work kidding up soft seedlings. Yep. Beautiful. There's lots to be had if if you want some. <laughs> tell them there was a little bit of a I, counting I, error and less of a counting error, more of a numbering error. Kind of skip like I still have. I skipped. <laughs> Hi guys. So yeah, Hi. I'm a numbering find thing. So this one was an ad hoc class. So I had to manually write numbers, and because I don't know how to go from <laughs> 23 to 24, and I went to 34. It ended up with um, 10 extra sets that I kitted up with mom today, and they're all available. So, yay! <laughs> and the cards are beautiful. So, yeah. definitely um, check out the cover photo so you can see the cards. Mm -hmm. um, you're definitely going to want them. They're yeah, really so cool. I still have 10 left in case you thought you missed out. They're there. Um, yeah. We kitted them up so they could actually go in the mail tomorrow. This class was free with a $30 order for porch pickup or 45 if you want the mail and you guys I'm gonna be sneaking back and forth here I've got maybe 10 or 12 more packing lists to print and we ran out of time and Kelly's still gonna go live um doing the class and just Absolutely. don't mind me at all okay <laughs> so yay have fun we can handle it all right so I'm trying to bring up the video for the comments so bear with me for a second as I pull that up. At the next time Kelly does this class for you guys next month, just remember it's going to be via a YouTube yes, live. Yes, that's right. So we're going to learn together. We're going to learn so. together, yep. And it's not that it's that much different. It's just in a platform that is YouTube that you just go find the, um, the live video. So you guys, we got one more class on Thursday night doing ink, paper, scissors in Facebook. And after that, it's going to be in YouTube. <laughs> so yay. We can do this. Yes, we can. It's going to be great. All right. Hello, Gwen, Susan, Cheryl, Vicki. Oh, hi, Sandy. Hello, everybody. Um, found it. So we're, we're functioning on all cylinders. Thank you so much for sharing, Shirley. I surely appreciate it. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Okay. I hope everyone is having a fantastic Tuesday. I've had a great week so far, so that's wonderful. Um, hi, Marsha. Hope you are having a great day. So we are doing Paper Pumpkin tonight. Um, the September Paper Pumpkin, as they always do, um, features Halloween imagery, and typically it always is treat boxes or, or treatsy somethings. So we're going to go through and make the treat boxes, and then I have a very cool alternative I planned ahead. <laughs> so I'm feeling good about it. I kind of have a vision for what it's going to be. Um, and I can't wait to show that to you, especially for those of you like me personally, even though I have a kiddo in school who does like Halloween trick or treating kind of stuff. I just, I don't get jazzed up about treat boxes. I really don't. And so I love to feature, um, I love to feature the alternative around utilizing the kit supplies to make a card. So stay tuned for inspiration on that. Um, so that's what you can expect today. Ooh, Marsha says she needs to order the fun folds. Do it. Marsha Colbert? Marsha Long. Oh, Marsha Long. <laughs> I can tell her I can sign up right now. Um, Marsha, if you're interested, drop a comment and we can get you signed up right now. A comment into email or fa um, message, text message. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So let's let's message that via email or text. <laughs> I overpromised. <laughs> Hi, Millie and Vera. It is so nice that you guys are all joined in. Um, we'll get started pretty soon here. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I accidentally opened the box early. I never do that. I always, you know, you'll see me cut it open, but I didn't open any of the, the stuff. So I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> so, and here's another little I wore flouncy sleeves today. I'm gonna show off my what flouncy sleeves mean. Like, look at this. This is this is weird. And I never, ever, ever would have done that if I was planning ahead to be like, I'm making cards tonight. Cause now when I'm crafting, I'm gonna have these flouncy sleeves all over the place, and it's gonna be distracting. So bear with me. It was it was a severe oversight, <laughs> but we can do it. Um, hi, Carrie and Sherry. 
Um, I hope you guys are ready for Paper Pumpkin. I'm so excited. Um, I haven't done it for a month. And like, it's just funny how these days and weeks and months just fly by. I, here we are again. Um, but I'm really excited. I, my birthday is in October and so is our anniversary and fall is my favorite time of the year. I'm not like super into Halloween, but I will say in the last decade I have gotten more into it. My husband really likes Halloween and um, I really like the hoorah behind like making Halloween costumes and the kids getting excited about Halloween. So I've kind of turned a leaf over to it a little bit. Um, we have 10 extra kits of the soft seedling and you know what, as I'm buying time, I could show them off. Do you have? Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll show you what those are. Um, oh, and Mary Hartman's texted Chris to sign up for fun folds. There you go. Everyone wants in on your card classes. Yes. What's it feel like to be in demand? Wow. Okay, so let's, as we're buying a little bit of time here, so this is the oopsies class that we have some extra for, and they are more than worthy of being signed up for. I don't know why I'm just like so into how beautiful these, um, leaves are and what are these things called those like helicopter Soft, things the yeah the, annoying helicopters. yeah the annoying helicopters <laughs> i don't know they're so pretty though so they this is maples, I think, from a maple tree. oh yeah because these are maple leaves so this is a fun fold um it's like a box card kind of thing oh look at it's, that it, it serves for this class and the fun fold it's being utilized twice in the next correct classes. i do recall that from when i logoed because i was so confused i was like chris we're missing a card. We're missing a card. Where is it? She pulled a fast one on me. Okay, so this fun fold is one of the cards. This card is my favorite. I, like, always, 100% of the time, go for this orangey um, color scheme, but this one is just drawing me in. I love it so much. Hi, Kathy. Um, it just, I, I got no words for it. I just really, really like it. That's all I'm gonna say. And then here's another one with a similar color scheme. Similar, similar everything, but very different. And I love the embossing folder on the back here. Hi, Pam from North Carolina. Thank you so much for tuning in. And then here's the fourth of four cards. Um, so, lovely, lovely. Help us make it through our oops and snag up one of these kits. And I wanna do add one thing. Boop -ba -doo. Um, people have always been asking, well, can I get this class? Can I pay for this class outright? Like some of the other classes are. And I purposely plan this class to be via an order only, you guys. It's the end of the Stampin' Up! month, quarter, and year. And I'm trying to finish as strongly as I possibly can in my sales area. And so that's why this class was offered in that way only. So I do appreciate everybody that has already placed an order to get this class for free. Um, you're helping me mm -hmm. make it how I got a goal in mind for where I want to end the year. And so you guys are helping me make it there. So thanks guys. All right. So get it. I want it. I think I'll snag up one of the kids too, because I just, I can't, I keep seeing it. I keep loving it. And I know I'm not going to cut these and, and make these myself, but if they're kitted, it then I for sure will. And I love this set. Um, does this have dyes? There are no dyes. There are no dyes. So we okay. use stitched rectangles a lot. Oh, yeah. We definitely pulled in, and then the oh, stylus shapes. Oh, and some shapes. of the and circles, the shapes. yeah. Yeah, so I love this font so incredibly much. I went to school for graphic design, so hello, Kathy from Iola. Um, so fonts speak to me, so I just, this is, this is just doing it for me. All righty, so we have 40 people on, and we've bought ourselves about 10 minutes. So how is about we get right into it? Got a, I've got a very, um, hmm. <laughs> anyone who crafts knows. I have a very like <coughs> shifty. Everything's like, ah, uh, if I sneeze, it's gonna fall over. All right, so we're gonna pretend like I'm opening this box because I, oopsies, did that ahead of time. Ooh, Mary Ryan. Yeah, I bet you that large leaf would not be too hard to fussy cut. No, not at all. Yeah. Every once in a while, I can I can do myself some fussy cutting. And hmm. people who have the Brother Scan and Cut machine oh. could scan it and cut it out for them. People who have that scan and cut machine. Interesting. That sounds fancy. Mm -hmm. Very fancy. Okay, so in this... Hi, Linda. In this advertisement, we have... Um, 
An advertisement for next month's Paper Pumpkin. It is holiday themed and it is cards this time. So that is a little sneaky peeky on the October Paper Pumpkin. And then on the back side, hello Christine. There is some information about the perks of being in Paper Pumpkin. Um, so that's different. I haven't seen such a generic call out. All right, so in the kit this month, we have Orchid Oasis. Then our stamps are Trick or Treat, Enjoy This Spooky Treat, Happy Halloween. So those are the words we have. Then we've got this kind of silly looking ghost with a very happy face. Um, some bats, a spider web, some stars, and a spider. Then we've got right on trend, some black tissue paper. All right, and then here are our little treatsy boxes. So let's dive in and see what they look like. I'm, I'm intrigued to see how big they are in person because I've seen some sneaks of um, people having made theirs already or people having um, shared alternatives or their finished product and all that stuff. Um, but you just never know until you see them in person or see them to scale. Um, so I'm interested about that. All right, so lots of goodies this time. All right, so we have tear and tape, which is amazing. We have black star embellishments, which are really nice. I like, they're, they're not matte, but they're not like iridescent. They're just kind of glossy. Two different sizes, oh, that's great. Um, so here's our tear and tape, let's put that off to the side. Okay. Treatsy box. Oh, okay. So these are the like sleeves. So we've got purple, which I'm assuming is going to be our fresh freesia. Then we have some white spider web um, die cut or laser cuts. And then this very fun plaid pattern with lots of colors that matches the uh, special edition paper pumpkin box. Then we also have some dimensionals. All right, now this is the Mac Daddy. These are the um, treat like box portion, I guess, where you, the part where you put the treats in. And then these are the sleeves that go around it. So let's see here. We've got orange, black, and white for those. Then we've got some die cuts. We've got these like flower tags. We've got some um, spider webs, bands, and um, sentiment squares. We've got some glue dots. We have like every type of adhesive this time. And then here we've got some bats and some spiders. So lots of stuff. All right, then we've got our instructions. All right, very important. I need to get myself a little more organized. Um, and then we'll get cooking here. Okay, and I don't have my host code out, so give me a second while I get that written down for you. W99RGRCT. There is your host code. Help us finish the Stampin' Up Your Strong. Get those orders in. Qualify for those free card kits, especially the soft seedlings. Love them so much. Okay, there's my little pitch. <laughs> okay, hi, Becky. Now, let's see which one we're starting with before I kind of move anything too far away. Okay, so. Wow, lots, lots to digest here. Holy man. Okay, so. Okay, so the orange box goes with the white sleeve, the black box goes with the plaid sleeve, and the white box goes with the purple sleeve. And it looks like we're starting with the um, spider web box first. So let's do it. Okay, so instructions on how to fold the box. I have seen online in some of my little paper pumpkin groups that it's a little bit maybe of a learner's curve is how we'll say it. <laughs> that being said, I haven't watched any tutorials on how to do it. So we're in this together. We're gonna figure it out. So it looks like 
So it's all scored and everything. So ideally, we fold on all, hello Ethel, fold on all of the score marks. And obviously we just keep folding in. That's how we would make that happen. Okay. Oh, it's kind of like a pizza box maybe? Well, we're about to find out. Okay, so let's... Oh, wow, okay. All right, sorry, I'm like deep in concentration to see if I did this right. Okay, so <laughs> here is treatsy box number one. Now I'm going to annotate that process because I didn't want to <laughs> say what I was doing if it wasn't going to turn out right. Um, so this is all held together just by the folds and the tension. However, if you want, you could put adhesive on these little flaps to kind of give it a little bit more of a secure hold, but the tabs and the tension are all long enough and I don't know, tense enough <laughs> that it holds itself together just out of sheer, um, sheer design. Okay, so I'm gonna do that again with the black one, which is going to be next. Okay, so all I did for the box is I pre-folded on all of the score lines. So just go ahead and work your way around the box, just folding lightly onto the score lines. Don't necessarily fold it together yet. You're just taking each of the um, score lines and making the fold. Once you've had each of them kind of pre-folded, then I'm going to go back around, lay it all back flat go back around and what I did first was fold in these flaps. Now, if you did want to use an ad adhesive to make the um, box hold together a little stronger, I would do it on the colored side of these four flaps. However, I feel good about how um, well constructed this is that I'm not going to do that. That is your own discretion though if you would like to do that. Okay, so fold those in and then um, what I'm going to do is take the long side, so I want these flaps to stay in, and then I need this portion, so the, the portion with the tuck side, I'm going to just fold it, bring it up, fold it over the two tabs, and then tuck this flap down. So I'm going to show that again. So I'm gonna bring these two sides, the sides with the circle cut out, I'm gonna bring these sides in so that the tabs are there to hold it together. I'm gonna to fold these back just so you can see it better. That is not necessary for actually making it. Then I'm going to bring this side up to the tabs and fold it over and under so that this little slot is ready to accept this tab which is ultimately what's gonna hold the whole box together. So right now there's no tension, so there's really nothing kind of holding this together. So I'm going to keep that held together with my thumb. Now come to this side where you've got these two tabs and we're gonna do the same thing, except for we've got the big part. So now this is the bottom of the box and this is what's gonna hold everything together. So fold these two tabs in, bring this side of the box up to the tabs, over the tabs, and then now you're gonna be folding this portion backwards. And then you're going to be tucking this tab into this flap. Now your box has some integrity to it, except for, ha ha, I did it a little, I missed a step in there. I was getting too in depth in explaining it to you that I missed a step in there. Fortunately though, you can pull this tab back out. I'm just gonna do it very gingerly so I don't break anything. Because what we need to do after we fold this first flap down, this is the flap that has the slot, then we need to do the sides so that when we put the bottom of the box in, we've got everything else in place to be held together. So we've got 
three of the flaps down and ready to again bring the bottom of the box up and back down and then tucked in. So I will do this one more time when we get to the white box, which is the last box that we're doing. So if that took a little bit of finagling to understand, you'll see it again. Okay, I'm gonna move my orange box back in because that is what we are decorating. Okay, next we need some strips of purple for our sentiment. So I'm going to grab this tiny little banner and let's see here, we are making three different style of treat boxes and we are making two, four, six of each of them. So there are 18 treat boxes total. And I do want to preface this and apologize at the same time, we have no extra kits available. Um, so we always order a couple extra paper pumpkin kits. We did. Um, and we did. And we did. We did, but not as many for Halloween. But they've all been spoken for. So if you ever see um, a kit, as soon as like you start to see sneaks for it, you can always reach out. Like you don't need to wait until the Paper Pumpkin Live to reach out to see if there are extras um, because they do go fast, especially when it's a cool one. So <laughs> be warned. Okay, so let's take um, the Happy Halloween stamp. And I will tell you this, I say it every time we do Paper Pumpkin Live. Um, I always bring in my own ink pad. So um, you get the stamp in spot. Really cool, this time is a um, in color. So I always love that. That's how I add to my in color collection. Um, I bring in my own stamping pad. The only difference here is of course the larger surface area, but also this is a foam pad compared to this is a fabric pad. So this is my own personal preference as to why I'm using this classic stamping pad instead of the spot. However, there's nothing wrong with the spot and by no means do you have to have the ink color um, just because I do. <laughs> so I'm going to stamp my Happy Halloween. I do also always bring in my own black. You do get a black the first time you subscribe to Paper Pumpkin. Um, it is the same size as this D block and you are guaranteed that all the stamps that come in your paper pumpkin kit are always going to fit on that D block. Um, however, the block that you buy from the Stampin' Up! catalog is a little more ergonomic. Um, it's got some like rounded edges and it's a little thicker. So again, my personal preference is just to use the Stampin' supplies that I personally own. But again, don't feel pressured to need to get one. You do get what you do get everything you need in your paper pumpkin kit to allow you to make these products. Okay, so happy Halloween. Then, always, always, always. Hi, Angie. I'm so glad you tuned in. I saw you yesterday at Walmart, but it didn't click in my head who you were by the time I breezed past you. I had two crazy kids with me that, you know, hmm, that always happens. Your brain is never functioning quite as well when you are juggling children. Okay, so, hi Becky, hello Elaine. All right, so I got that stamped. Now, we are bringing in our spider web sheath. Okay, so here's this. Now, it is showing that we want to have it this way and we want to bring in one of these mustardy colors. Let's see, I'm guessing it's crushed curry. And, sorry, I'm punching it out. So, we need, oh, oh, oh. special delivery. We've got some delicious cookies. Janet is the best cook I know, so those are gonna be those are, wonderful. Those are extra, extra nami. Okay, so, we are putting this banner over the top of the spider webs. So let's go ahead. I am not a glue dot person. So I'm going to use liquid glue. But again, if you don't have that supply, you can always use the glue dots. They are included in your kits. Thank you, Kelly. Mm -hmm. I'll see you later. Bye. Okay, so let's stick this down. There-ish. Then, our next step, so let me bring this up for a second. If you are new to Paper Pumpkin, 
These black dots indicate glue dots. These white hexagons indicate our dimensionals. So they just give you a really great idea about where and how you need to stick your things, which to me is fantastic because sometimes I really struggle with that. It is just a suggestion if you like to have things much more secure, you can add as many glue dots and um, foam dimensionals as you want. Okay, then we need a spidey, cute, adorable spider. Okay, so we're gonna put a dimensional on the back of that guy. Ooh, okay. And then it appears as though, now, this spider needs to get stuck on to somewhere where it's not gonna get stuck on to the orange thing behind it, right? Oh, well the treat box is gonna be empty for the time being. I still feel like you don't wanna have it stuck to something. So I think I'm going to, hmm, I'm a little perplexed here. So, okay, here's what I did. Hi, Becky. I stuck it where I wanted the spider to go, and it's kind of like just dangling in space, and it is what it is. But I am going to bring in a piece of tape. I don't know if this is necessary or not. This is just me kind of thinking this through in my head. I don't want, like, let's say if I put some candy in here, I don't want the candy to get stuck to this, like, if I put it over the top. So I'm just going to cut down this piece of tape a little bit and cover up the back side of this dimensional. So now there's no sticky adhesive hanging out. Again, I don't really know if that was necessary, but it puts my mind at ease a little bit doing that. Okay, then we're going to put the Happy Halloween right over the top of that. Here-ish. Oh my gosh, so cute. Again, Halloween's not really my jam, but I mean, how can you not like this cutesy little spider? Okay, then we're going to pull in, I'm gonna grab my take your pick tool. See, my flouncy sleeves, they're just, <laughs> I feel like a pirate. Okay, so we need one big one, and there are like a gazillion of these, so you're gonna have a ton left, which is awesome. Okay, I'm gonna put him there, and then two teeny dinies. So we're gonna put one here. Oosh. And then one up top up here. Oh no, an extra one stuck to me. So typically with embellishments and the reason why I took that off, typically with embellishments you do an odd number. So that's why I kind of liked where it landed there, but we didn't need it. Okay. So that is how we're gonna decorate that one. I love, love, love it. Then we're gonna bring in our tear and tape and we're gonna run a strip of tear and tape along this end to seal her up. So we'll go about there-ish. <sighs> Angie, you were on a mission. I mean, as was I. So like, but I, I did see you. I was, And after the fact it registered, I'm like, I have not seen you in a long time, so I really hope you're doing well. And that's what I would have said <laughs> in the store, too. <laughs> okay, so then we're going to fold on the score lines, and we are going to tear the tear and tape and seal up our box. All right, so let's go ahead and... <laughs> that is so stinking cute. I love it. And that was really simple too. <laughs> so we've got one done. And next we're going to do the crazy plaid one. I did already make the black box. So we are going to jump right into decorating it. But I promise for those of you that missed it or want to see it one more time, I will do the folding of the box one more time for the last one. It is cute, Cindy, I love it. Okay, so we've got the box done. So step one is done. 
Step two, we need to grab our stamp. We are doing Enjoy This Spooky Treat. All right. I also really love the color scheme. So like, obviously, purple is an obscure color to go with orange and black. It's been, you know, utilized that way for years and years and years, though. So I've grown to get grown used to it. But I like the Orchid Oasis. Like, it's not a traditional purple. It's more of a bluey purple. And I really like it. Okay, so we need a ghost. We need a spidey web and we need a white piece that is for our sentiment so let me gather those pieces sorry i don't have enough room on camera to watch, for you to watch me stumble through this um okay so there are our pieces now let's bring in our stamp pad Enjoy this spooky treat. Ah, I am getting distracted by my fancy sleeves. I got this shirt at a boutique in town last year. Um, Lillian's, for anyone who's local to us. I love Lillian's, uh, but I don't usually buy new clothes. I kind of just always wear what I always had and... Um, pick up some stuff at thrift stores every once in a while or rummage sales. Um, I had a gift card and this was on clearance and it was with the cardigan that um, was on the mannequin together. So I didn't realize it had flouncy sleeves. Otherwise I definitely wouldn't have bought it. I'm so glad I did. I love this shirt. I do always wear it with the cardigan though because I'm a little too timid to embrace the flouncy sleeves, as you can tell, because I keep talking about them. Um, but I'm learning to love it and just kind of talk myself into wearing it. <laughs> so, um, and I was wearing my cardigan all day at work today, but at the end of the day, um, we were setting up for an event. So I was moving around a lot and I got really hot. And so I just kind of, yeah, I just kind of needed to take it off and, I was like, oh my God, this is going to be a treat to make cards in with these sleeves bouncing all over the place, but we got it. Okay, this one is very difficult to see where the score lines are, so it is going to be a lot more complicated to decorate. I do have very bad vision as well, even though I have glasses, so I think this is not how they suggest to do it, but I think what I'm going to do is, um, hi Tammy. I'm going to close up my box before I decorate it so I can see where my um, where my score lines are or kind of what my working surface is before I get too deep into having it decorated and then it being off-centered. So I kind of lightly creased the score lines right off the bat and then I'm going to go ahead and seal it. And then I'm going to decorate. So what we've got here is we're going to put glue dots. So here I am breaking the rules. I'm going to go ahead and use a liquid glue on the back of this guy. And then he's going to go roughly upper right corner. So I'm going to put him just here-ish. Then we've got dimensionals behind the ghost. So let's do that next. One, two, stuck them right next to each other. One, two, three. Okay, so then he's gonna go on this side. Oh my gosh, so cute. I also definitely 1 million percent prefer um, cute Halloween as opposed to spooky Halloween. Okay, so we're going to flip this over and then the dimensionals are going to go on the left side. 
so that the right side is going to be held up by the ghost and the left side needs that support. So that's why we are putting our dimensionals on the left side, which is actually the right side when you flip it over. Okay, so three dimensionals there. So here we go. I think I put my spider web up just a little bit too high, but it is what it is. And because it bows a little bit or has a little bit of flexibility, I'm also going to throw a dab of glue underneath this corner. Of course, you could always use a glue dot as well. Okay, so let's hold that there for a second. And then we're going to go put some star embellishments on as well. Um, one of my ultimate favorites about Paper Pumpkin is the fact that they show you where they put their embellishments. I will forever and always say that I am bad at random. Um, Chris will fight me on it every once in a while because she disagrees with that statement and it's cute. I mean, obviously we're always our own worst critic, but um, I don't know, I struggle to place things randomly. So Paper Pumpkin shows you exactly where they suggest you put them. Again, it's your own choice, your project. You can put them wherever you want, but I like that guidance. Okay, so here is treatsy box number two. Let's put our little box in there. I wish there were treats in it right now, let's be honest with you. Okay, so that one I closed a little tighter. Um, so I really lined it up pretty perfectly and I think I made it maybe just a hair too tight. It works, but I would probably, oh my God, it, yeah, it works. <laughs> Um, so the last one that we do, I'll kind of give a little bit more room on here. So there's one and two. So now we're going to go back to seeing if I can remember how to make this box. Okay. So three is here. So this is the white box. The white box is going to be the hardest for you all to see because you can't tell what the inside and outside is, but let's see if we can do this. So First and foremost, I want you to go ahead and pre-fold on all of the score lines. Boom, boom, and boom. Then on this side, they're all just gonna kind of start to curl up, which is fine. Okay, so the first side I want you to do is the short side that doesn't have a hole in it. <laughs> so we're gonna fold in the tabs, which again, if you want a little bit more security, glue on the outside of these tabs. So on the black and the orange, if it's a colored box, or on the outside of the white. Okay, so we're gonna fold those in. I'm gonna fold these out just so you can see it a little better, but that is not necessary. Okay, so fold these in. Then we are going to bring that short side up. So we're gonna fold it up, fold it back down, and then tuck it in to make room for the tab. So to make the slot available. I'm gonna kind of give that a little pressure to keep that shut. Then we're gonna close the left and the right side. So we're just gonna bend down and tuck that in tight, okay? Then we're gonna bend this one down and tuck that in tight. So now we've got three sides of our box done and we're gonna bring the longest flap because this is the bottom of our box. We're gonna bring that up to collect the last two tabs. We're gonna bring it down, we're gonna tuck it in and then we're gonna take this tiny little tab and secure it into the slot that was from the first tab that we closed up. Now you've got a secure little box. Just like that. And you can kind of shimmy a little bit to make the corners a little more perfect if you want. But here you have your little treatsy box. Okay. So finish the box. Now we need trick or treat and the bets. So let's get our little circle die cut.
Okay, and then we need our purple sleeve. This will be our fresh freesia. Okay, so trick or treat. Alrighty, I'm gonna move this out of the way because we don't need it for a little bit yet. Okay, I'm getting a little crazy with this ink over here. Oh my goodness. It must be like a dead spot in the ink pad. Okay. Perfect. Now, I need to clean this off and switch to the bats. I love them. They are so cute. Okay. I don't know if you can hear it, but our neighbor is mowing the lawn. So I've got myself a little company. Ooh. Okay. Now we are going to stamp bats in the upper right hand corner and the lower left hand corner. Now, this is a solid color, so I can much easier, much more easily see the score lines. Um, so unlike the last time, I'm not going to pre-fold that. Okay, so for the time being, until we switch to our alternative card, I am done with stamping. So I'm gonna take a minute to just clean up those supplies and get them out of my way because I just don't have room. Workspaces are never large enough. Okay. So I'm just going to pull those aside. Then we need the orange and black banner and the rest of the stuff we have. So grab your glue dots or again, liquid glue. We're gonna center this vertically and horizontally in the middle here. Okay, then trick or treat is going to be adhered via dimensionals. Then we're gonna grab our take your pick tool again and we're gonna put a large star. Ooh, stuck to my finger. Okay, large star down here-ish. A small, hi Randy. You can absolutely catch the replay if you'd like to see the paper pumpkin projects, but we're just about finished. And we will be embarking in a journey to make an alternative card pretty soon. Okay, so there we've got our embellishments on it. Now, here's where I'm going to try to do a little better this time. I'm going to grab my tear and tape. Stick that guy down. And then we're going to give a little more slack. So let's go ahead and fold on the score lines. And then instead of butting it straight up and completely lining this up, I'm going to pull it back just, I mean, less than an eighth of an inch even, just a little bit to give it a little more wiggle room. Okay, then we've got our white box and we're gonna put the two of them together. Boosh. So. I'm gonna bring into the screen all the treatsy boxes that we made. Sorry, I'm, that's a little obnoxious, but I just like it. Okay, so here are the boxes that we made. I'm going to take a moment to clean up and then we are going to make an alternative card. And the keyword there is card. We are making a card because not everyone likes 
to make treat boxes or gift containers. So I want to show you how universal they can be in making them for other functions. So they actually were designed to be universal. Like you could mat it up and put these on the front of a card. So we've got two and a half by three. So you could put a couple mats behind there and easily have um, the focal image for a card. So that's cute. Cute boxes for the little trick-or-treaters. Absolutely. Okay, so let's pull these aside so you can stare at them while we, and I'm going to pull this one especially aside because this is what I'm going to use for my inspiration for my card. So, I need to pull together a little mojo. I'm, um, I didn't have supper yet, so I need to eat supper after I'm done. So I need to pull this together so that we can make something cute and amazing before I go get some nourishment. Okay, so here's my inspiration. I wanted to make something that had interest that utilized, you know, had a, had a focal image. So basically I'm going to take this and put that there <laughs> and then we're going to have this type of a card. So let's get started. Okay. So I want to do, um, I need to grab a white outer. We need to cut it down find my cutter and this should be two and a half by three. Oh, there's a little, little remnant on there. It's literally glued on there. Okay. All right. So let's cut that down. Two and a half by three. And now we're gonna make a couple mats <laughs> because this alone is not, in my opinion, is not bold enough to draw the attention. I do like how on this card, um, Chris has it intentionally made more horizontally. And this is definitely, ver ho, 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 I could do it horizontally. Oh, now my world just, is spinning. Let's see here. So that's going to relay into the inside as well. So, oh my goodness. I never, <laughs> I threw myself for a loop there. And there's going to be math involved. Oh my good gracious. What did I do? Okay. So I'm thinking, trying to think out loud or trying to like not think out loud. Um, I'm going to need some DSP here, and I'm thinking I would love to utilize this for that purpose. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of DSP in here, though. Holy man, guys. Okay, so we need uh, five and a quarter by one and a half, so three... Okay, so we can get two of them out of here. I mean, there's going to be a score line, but because of how busy it is, I think we'll be okay with that. And then I think we're going to just have to utilize cardstock back there, which I think is going to be fine. Then, so let's, one thing at a time. Okay, I need my straight cutter. And I'm going to, we're going to go over all the measurements and everything. Um, but for the time being, I'm going to just kind of move in grooves so that I keep moving this forward before I talk myself out of it. Okay, so five and a quarter. Boom. We're making cuts. It's happening. Five and a quarter. Then we need one and a half. And obviously, 
if you were making this not with the intention of utilizing paper pumpkin pieces alternatively, you could use any type of DSP. Okay. Now, I'm trying to decide between whether or not I'm making my card base fresh freesia or black. I just don't know if black, so, mm. I think I'm gonna do fresh freesia and I can always make another one if it doesn't, in black, if it doesn't turn out how I want it to. So let's grab our fresh freesia and let's um, utilize Chris's notes on how to make this bad guy. Okay, so five and a half by 11 in coral would be five and a half and 11 by um, five and a half by 11. Okay, so five and a half by 11. Now, it appears as though, and it makes sense, we're only gonna get one card out of this. So bear with me, this becomes scrap. Now, this is called an accordion fold and Typically, what I've seen is you would make this on maybe a 12 by 12 because we're utilizing a piece of eight and a half by 11. That's why you get a little short here, but it's totally okay because when you close it, you get that look of having a fully um, matted piece. The only place you really see it is on the back and it doesn't really matter. Um, so if that really, really, really bugs you, you absolutely can do this on a piece of 12 by 12 and then get that, that fully finished off look. But I, I personally feel like most people don't have all of the Stampin' Up! colors in the 12 by 12 sheets. And that's why this has been specifically designed that you don't need to use a piece of 12 by 12. Okay. So we are scoring at, now remember, scoring, don't accidentally cut. I've done that way too many times. Okay, so let's pull out this guy. And we are scoring at four and a quarter, six. Did that? Okay, yeah, barely. Six. Seven and three quarters. And nine and a half. All right, so now if you go ahead and kind of loosely fold that up. So now we're gonna have this, fold it back, Fold it back, fold it back, and fold this back. And that's where you're gonna see that's just a hair short here. And that's okay. <laughs> okay, so there's your accordion. Now, our DSP, we have those cut already. Those are five and a quarter by one and a half. Now, I think I'm gonna go ahead and glue those on already because that might help me start to solve this puzzle. Okay, so I'm gonna bring my bone folder in and give those a nice crease. Then I'm gonna open her back up and start gluing. Okay. Right. This may not be like, okay, if I wasn't trying to, again, utilize supplies that were designed for paper pumpkin, I maybe wouldn't have chosen this particular DSP for this exact card. Um, I'm hopeful that this plaid doesn't compete with the spiderweb 
pattern that's coming up, but we will see. Okay, then the last one. We need to be a little careful about how we are gluing so that we don't need to worry about, okay, so here I, I was trying to flip it over so that we got a variation in pattern, but now our horizontal lines aren't matching up and you know, that was an oversight. So let's flip that one over and then here we go. We want this one to go like this. Okay, so now I don't want to glue beyond this black strip because this black strip is technically going to be hanging off. So when I flip it over, I'm gonna stay away from this end. So I'm gonna draw myself a glue line and not exceed it. Okay. Oh my goodness, I don't wanna get glue on my fingers. Alrighty, so here we go. Okay, so now we have that mega colossal and look at that I even didn't pull it over far enough haha -ha. good thing it wasn't completely set yet pretty close though holy man okay so there's that now I think I want to double mat this just to make it have a larger footprint but I don't know now if that is exactly what I want Okay, so this obviously is not going to be standing on there, so it's not going to have so much competing with it. I'm going to mat it in black for sure. But, okay, so I, I need a little inspiration here. Okay, so we need to make this piece yet. This we have done, kind of. I mean, we have to, like, decorate it and stuff yet, but that's easy. So I need to make this piece and then something here and then the inside is not going to be difficult either. Though, I do need to bear in mind that I don't have a DSP. I mean, I'm sure I could come up with something, but all Chris's DSP is upstairs, not in the hive. So I need to be a little creative about that. I have an idea though. Okay, so let's Ultimately, I want this piece to be black, I think. I think I want this piece to be black. I'm going to start cutting in hopes that it comes together for me. <laughs> so, do I have any basic black scraps that I could use? Dun, dun, dun. Okay, this is not big enough. But I'm trying to figure out what size mat I want. I want it directly on the black, but I was thinking of double matting, but I don't know that I want to bring any of those colors in. So, <laughs> yeah, so I have an idea about the embossing folder. I just don't know. So there used to be a spider webs embossing folder, which would have been bomb, but I think it has... Um, not expired, retired. Um, but I have a different idea. Um, let me see. Okay, so I want... Oh, bear with me, guys. Here we go, here we go. So that is a map size. So that is going to be five and a quarter by four. Some vellum. I'm sure that is not. Oh my gosh, is it really five and a quarter? Well, we can make that work. Okay, so let's cut it at four. Five and a quarter. And that thing is just, just, just big enough. Okay, then this could be horrible, so let's hope it's not. I want to crumple it. Let's 
So this is going to be a little harder to crumple than normal because it's vellum. But I'm thinking that's going to give that the spider web texture look that I was going to go for with that embossing folder that doesn't exist anymore. Okay. Wow. This has a crinkle unlike um, normal paper. I love it. Okay. So not that we need any more dimension in this card that's already very dimensional. This is one of those cards that we call like a um, five pound card or one pound card. I can't remember what Chris calls it. Um, but okay, so I really like that, except for I feel like I want it to be matted on black which I know we don't need another layer again, but like, look at how bomb that looks on black compared to, it still looks cool, just not as cool. But I think I'm gonna stick with it. Like, let's not overcomplicate it because it's already a very complicated card. Now, the worst of it is going to be figuring out how to um, adhere it. So, you guys, I have like just such a loose idea of what I'm trying to accomplish here. Okay, so now let's go back to this hole. So this is going to go on there. Oh my God, this is going to be so thick. I hope this works. Um, I might need to like dial this down a little bit because not only do I need to adhere it, but I also need to adhere something on top of it. All right, there's my um, faux embossing folder. Okay, so... Here we are back at it. So this piece, if it's two by three, needs to be three and a quarter by two and a quarter times two is four and a half. If that's enough of a border which I think it's going to be. And if not, I'm going to make it be. So four and a half by three and a quarter. Let's do it. Three and a quarter first. By four and a half. Score it at two and a quarter. Oh, this is looking so tiny. I hope it's not too small. Okay, otherwise we might need to get creative. That's what this is all about. Okay, so this adheres here to here. Oh, but now here what's going to be very difficult is that does not give us enough room to open, does it? No, no, it doesn't. Okay, so what size do we have going on here? So that gives us enough of an angle to open. Maybe even could get by pulling it down just a little. So we need three inches, so six inches. see him. Three inches wide would be, dun, da, da, dun. I'm just trying to figure out how tall it should be so that it's somewhat proportionate. Um, so three inches, six inches, two, is this two and a half? I'm forgetting myself. Two and a half to three, that gives, okay, so then I need the height of three, so three and a half by six. Okay, let's try that again. So now, three and a half, 
by six. Scored at three. Take two. Ooh, I had a little bit of a fun idea. All right, let's try this. So now this would go here. I already like the bigger footprint of it. Where's my spidey web? There it is. So, I don't love how thick of a mat it is because it's already got a thick mat. So, what I'm going to try to do, we'll see if That's not quite big enough. I'm trying to scrounge. Ah, not even so necessary. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, does this fit here? It fits this way. So, I need two and a half by three. So we need, I am so sorry. Hi, Linda. I am so sorry. You guys are like trudging through this all with me. All right, so two and three quarter by three and a quarter. And if I did my math wrong, I'm going to probably cry. Now, I really liked, so I, I hope I still like this. I really liked the high contrast of the white on black. Now we're not going to get that high contrast and I don't like it as much. So I knew this was going to happen. I'm going to be complicated and I'm going to cut that portion out because why not? So I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to do it not like super scientifically, but I'm going to bring in, do I have a pencil here? I love pencils, but okay, so I'm going to bring in my writing utensil and kind of denote where I'm going to cut. And then I'm gonna connect the dots. I am sorry, like I'm making this so complicated. I know I, I like to make alternatives, not necessarily easy per se, but like attainable. So sorry if this is not gonna be your style. I'm, I'm sorry. But I really like where this is headed. So let's see it through, right? So now I'm just very gingerly connecting my purple dots. Ooh, that one got a little close. Hopefully it's still fine. And also a lot of this well, all of this is built on my personal preference. Hi, mom. How are you? Thanks for tuning in. We're making an alternative paper pumpkin card right now. Well, right now I'm trying not to <laughs> rip my vellum. Okay, so again, this is based on my personal preference. So like maybe it doesn't bother you that, oh shoot, my purple just bled, um, that there's no high contrast anymore. Um, shoot, can I get that off? Can I get that off? No, I can't. Um, all right, we have an ink eraser. Ink erasers like never work, but it's worth a shot. All right, well, it's better than it was. Okay, so now I have a little piece of bone that is gonna bleed all over the place. Okay, so here we go, back at it. Now. I don't know if I can, what piece, I have a few too many things at my workstation. Okay, so this is gonna go there. And then this is going to go here and in an ideal world, oops, let's see here. In an ideal world, this is gonna be glued down and this is gonna be hovering. So let's make it happen. I'm going to put my, okay, 
one thing at a time. We're gonna bone fold this so that it stays nice and flat as I'm layering this up. Then I'm going to put adhesive as close to this interior edge as possible because I don't want much to any of it seeping out that we can see it. Vellum is great. However, adhering vellum can be very challenging because it is see-through, so you are going to see that, um, that, adhe that point of adhesion or that adhesive. Um, so we want to be discreet and intentional about our adhesive so that we don't overshoot and make it super visible. Now, I am putting the ink side, so like my purple ink, it would have been a lot better if it was pencil, but I don't see a pencil here. Um, I'm going to put that down so that it is less visible. Now, this sandwich needs to go opposite of a normal fold. So you will see that here. All right. So now I'm going to mat that. And as soon as I have it where I want it, I'm going to push down on that glue, that liquid glue, and I'm actually going to flip it over and give it a nice firm hold. Okay, so that is that. Now I'm going to bring in my dimensionals. Okay, I'm going to move this off. And if we are going to be kind of putting this on the front of a card, I want this to be down in that corner, so I'm going to flip it over this way. Obviously, we can put a dimensional smack dabby there, and then strategically placed around in a variety of places. The border here is thick enough that you don't really need to worry about the um, adhesive showing out, but still got to be a little careful not to get it too close to the edges and I'm I mean this is a thick heavy card so I'm not gonna skimp on the adhesive I have a feeling so Chris has a postal scale I don't know if I know how to turn it on we can try to weigh it at the end to see if it would go with a single stamp but I'm thinking it might have a few too many layers that it might not be just a standard stamp. It could be an extra ounce stamp, which that just means it's a, a card worth sending. Okay, really what it means is it's a card that's easier to hand deliver, but you know, just throw that extra ounce stamp on and you're good to go. Okay, so now let's get the dimensional backs off. Okay, we're getting there. The next step is going to be absolutely the easiest. Oopsies. Oh no! Okay, so let's get that centered on there. Oh, I love it. It looks so much better with that extra mat and while still maintaining the black background for my spider web. So here we go. Now we're just going to decorate it just like we did here. Okay. Just make sure that's nice and stuck. Okay. So now I'm going to bring back my happy Halloween and the fresh freesia little piece and a spidey. And a little orange banner. Oh my gosh, there's so many pieces of punch outs for this kit. All right, one more. Ah, come on. Okay, here we go. Here we go. All of that hullabaloo for this teensy little stamp. All right, where is my block? Oh my gosh. <laughs> you guys, I have a huge mess. Oh, there it is. Okay, are we getting excited? I, I'm super excited. I love how this is turning out. Okay, let's put that there. Okay, happy Halloween. Okay. 
Okay. Let's get this cleaned up. Sorry, I know I'm all on the bottom of the screen here. I just I don't want to like... I've got a very delicate balance of a lot of things happening here. Okay. Let's move this out of here. Okay, I just need to check something because I haven't seen any... Oh my goodness, so many comments that... Um, it was like... The last comment that came in was a notification that my mom was watching, but that was like a long time ago. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my God, are my comments not coming through? And they weren't. So hello to everyone. And thanks for the positive messages <laughs> that I didn't see. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and, oh my God. And then I turned my screen off. So here we go. Now I've got my comments back. Okay, here we go. Now let's go back to decorating this. We need to glue this down, which was roughly here and here and here and maybe here. Okay, let's put this bad boy on. So now earlier I was saying that this kit was intentionally designed that the boxes are um, made to a point that can easily be put on the front of a card, if that makes any sense. So basically that's what we're doing. I made a mini card that I'm putting on a big card. So let's deck the halls on this. Now this one, if you were with me when I made this in the first place, I was concerned, oh no, I got a double stack of, oh my goodness, craziness. Okay, I had a double stack, um, excuse me, I was worried about the adhesive sticking to whatever you stick in this box. Well, I'm not worried about that on this one because I defined what's behind the spider web. So it could stick to the card, but I don't think it will, and if it does, it does. Okay, so let's put that little guy there. And I see here, it did. Um, <laughs> and to be honest with you, that's where I could kind of double stack that bad boy. Let's do it. Let's do it, do it, do it. I had a double stack already. And so now, so basically the reason I'm double stacking is because it was sticking to the black card base, which is held up by which has the white layer that is held up by a dimensional. So it was kind of being stuck down a level and I, I want that extra dimension because you know what, we're going all out on it. So that one as well. There's just such a delicate area for me to stick this to that I, um, it's hard to catch that spider web if you get what I'm saying. So I'm gonna double stack that one too. I'm gonna to stick that original dimensional on the black back. Then I'm going to, boom. So she's stuck, that's for sure. Okay, now I need dimensionals on the back of this guy as well. Thank you, Maria. I am so impressed with this alternative card. The last two or three times I've really blown myself away by my alternatives, so. I'm a fan. I love, Paper Pumpkin Night is one of my favorites and I do it every month and it's just fun. I used to spend a lot more time, I used to actually pre-make the alternative ahead of time and then just remake it live with you guys. I like that I'm doing it this way now because I mean I get to, sometimes I get inspired by some of your comments and sometimes I get flustered and like don't know where it's going and it ends up working out and so I don't know, it's just, a fun part of the design process to do it with you together. As much anxiety as it sometimes does give me. Okay, there we go. So now we need to do the stars. 
And, <laughs> oh yeah. So I think what it does, Lynn, is it makes me totally relatable to you guys. Cause here you are sitting at home making your cards. Oh, look at that. That is impossible to see. So, oh my gosh, I'm not gonna do this until the end because they might not go. Cause like here, but that it just doesn't look, it just doesn't look right. Okay, so here we go. We have this piece. And then we have this piece. Now I need to determine whether that is enough back there or if I need to mat it on a piece of black. And I'm inclined to want to mat it on a piece of black. I don't know if that's the right answer, but I think that's what I'm going to work towards. And I can always change my mind. So I need a, a mat piece, which is four by five and a quarter. And then I'll have to cut that down if that is truly what I want. So five and a quarter. Yeah, I don't know if I finished my thought, but what I was replying to Lynn with is, I think it makes me more relatable because you guys all sit there and work through your design process as you make cards. And you don't, sometimes you do, but most of the time you don't see Chris or I work through that design process because it's done for you. The designing of the cards is done ahead of time. You get your kits, you watch us make it and give tips and tricks on how and why they were done that way. But sometimes what percolates up in your head and then what ends up on the card can take hours. <laughs> so oftentimes it's hard to do like a live thinking on your toes type of design session. But that is what I'm trying to do with you guys. And I'm loving every minute of it. Okay, so now I think I'm going to go ahead. I've already kind of <laughs> committed to this whole like this is going to be a one pound card idea. So I think I'm just going to do it. And I want it matted. I'm not going to freehand it. I'm going to cut it down with my trimmer. Okay, so now if that is five and a quarter by one, I need this to be five. So now hopefully this doesn't cut like jaggedy because it's, you know, now it's a jaggedy piece of paper. It would have been way better. So like if you love this um, card and want to make it, it would have been way better to cut this piece of vellum to the right size before you crumpled it. But I didn't do that. <laughs> okay, so then this is going to be three and three quarters. And I'm going to try my best to make it flat-ish. All right, here we go. Hopefully that was the right choice. And you know what? We might not ever know if it wasn't. wait for Chris to see this alternative. I think she's going to like it. I'm also going to show you, I, I peeked it before, where I pulled my alternative inspiration from. So basically, I wanted to make a card that had a lot of interest in it that could feature this, you know, this is kind of small for a focal image. So I needed something that was busy and big to feature for this card and um, I asked Chris, I saw someone make an accordion card and I was like, hey, do you have the sizes and measurements for this? And she did and it's for an upcoming class. So you'll see that in a second. So now I need to I'll leave that there. And I'm gonna, let's see here, put adhesive on this part. Um, Sometimes I can think and talk at the same time. Other times it is impossible. So um, so the card is from the upcoming Tranquil Thoughts, I think is what it's called. Um, so I'm going to show those cards off in a second. Okay, so there's that. Now I need to flip this over and adhere that. Oh no, there is some adhesive oozing out. So let's... Pull that. I didn't know the best way to mark that. I clearly didn't eyeball it so great. All right, so now, yeek, I need to do the same thing. Oh, shoot. And I need to come up with something to put on that. Yikes. Okay, so 
let's do this. One battle at a time. That is all I can handle. Now I don't think I put enough glue on that side. <laughs> it is a vicious battle. So I got glue under my fingernails. Oh my God, I spread the glue under my fingernails. Oh, that is hilarious. Okay, so now I have sticky undernail. That's funny. Okay, so now I need to put this there. I really like that on the black. I'm glad I did that. So I need to come up with the way to adhere that. Now I have a couple questionable. So here's that inspo card coming in, and I'll show you the rest of the cards for the card class in case you want to... Um, in case you don't want to have to do everything we just did, you can just make this beautiful card instead and Chris will have everything cut for you. Okay, so now basically I need to come up with these three pieces. Um, I don't have an embossing folder in mind. I don't know, maybe I don't need to decorate this side of things. Maybe I'll leave that blank. I don't love that idea, but it's not a horrible idea. Okay, I have a little piece of adhesive down here somewhere. Where'd it go? Okay, and then I need to stick this bad boy down. And I'm not going to do that quite yet because I need to know where I'm safe to adhere without the adhesive showing, um, which is, yes, I definitely need to do that. But I'm also going to be able to fully glue behind this piece. So I need to figure out what that piece is necessarily going to be. I'm thinking I'm going to use... Let's see here. Ha! Lovely. So what length do we have here? Three and a half. So I'm going to cut this down. And then I'm going to cut a piece of basic white. We're almost done here. Thank you so much for bearing with me as this has... <laughs> this is very close to what I had in mind. It just is a little, you know, I, I ran into some technical snags. Sorry. I don't have enough room and I can't keep moving things. I'm running out of, running out of place to move things. Okay, so this is going to go here, I think. So I'm not loving it as like totally much as I was in my head. But that's going to close. So this basically either needs to be a scotch smaller than that. Because I don't want it peeking out. Or it needs to be glued exactly where it is so it doesn't peek out. Ooh, and that is a little smidgen too big if I want it to look centered. Okay, so let's go. All right, so I can fully glue behind here-ish without running into problem. That's a great idea. I could replicate that on the back. This is gonna be like a one of a kind, one and done, I'm never making it again card. I mean, it wasn't, it really wasn't horrible, but. Okay, so now, especially because this is so crinkly, I need to give it a lot of pressure to get that one to really stick. And that is why we want to hide it, because look at how ugly that is. Okay, so. It's going to go roughly there, -ish, and I'm going to cut a little bit more off so that it can be more centered. I am going to glue a little more on these outer edges a little bit, but not quite yet because I want to put some embellishments down, which will help me find where I can put some more adhesive. So, one second. I need to crack my back like a little bad. Okay, that was glorious. Alrighty. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? Okay, I got it. I just need to like... Oh man. Okay, so one thing at a time. So I need to trim. Is it a quarter inch off of here? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to trim this down a quarter of an inch. Where's 
So it currently is three and I'm cutting it down to two and three quarters. And then I think I can adhere that. You're doing great work. Thank you guys so much for all of the positive juju. I love it. Okay, and because of the like super crinkly um, layer that I'm adding this to, I'm going to use tear and tape and I'm gonna give it some real good adhesive because it's gonna need it. Okay. so that I don't stick it to the wax. Oh no, I just got bumped out on my end of things. I hope that doesn't mean I lost all of you. So let's look for Cards by Christine. And there I still am. Okay, that was weird. Hopefully that didn't happen to anyone else. But I'm just glad that it didn't kick out my, like, live stream. Because that would have been sad. I still have some stuff to accomplish. Gotta finish this card. We need to do a giveaway. Okay, so now I don't know if this is the best way to do it. But basically, I'm gonna line it up here. I'm still here. Good. Good, good, good. I'm gonna line it up there. Get my fingers unstuck. One of these sides not super square. It's probably the black that's not super square, let's be honest. Yeah, that is what it is. Okay, and then I'm gonna close it so I know where that goes. <laughs> this is super scientific. <laughs> Ooh, I'm glad to know that there is an adhesive out there that works great on vellum because I used to have a vellum tape roller that worked really well, um, but I don't even know where it came from or what it was called, so um, I don't have that anymore. Okay, so now I need a basic white layer, and that needs to be two and a half by three and a quarter. So let's get some basic white. here this does not happen to be that size no 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 it's not okay <laughs> I like to use scraps but it doesn't always work two and a half by three and a quarter hello Julie thanks for tuning in okay now I need to stamp it up just a little bit and then I'm going to take a couple things out of this goodie box to decorate this side. Like, yeah, of course. All right, so I'm gonna do like, I don't know, this and that, like here and there-ish. Like, I don't wanna overdo it because there's so many things happening already. And I can't give it any extra dimension. It just can't happen. So let's go like there-ish. And like there-ish. Oh, I love it! It's so cute! Okay. Then I'm gonna stamp something on here. So where are my stamps? There's so many things happening. I don't wanna add much more. I think I'm just gonna put some bats. Oh, so many things happening. Okay, 
this is also just a hair crooked, which is gonna drive me a little crazy, but it is what it is. Oh, there's stars too. All right, I think I'm just going to do black bats in the bottom. You know what? I'm going to do the color that came with <laughs> the kit because it's here. I did crumple the vellum with my hands. So I had never crumpled vellum before, so that was a little bit of a learning curve. It's a little thicker than um, just for funsies. It's a little thicker than um, cardstock, so I had to be a little more intentional about how I crumpled it. Um, but it definitely worked out. Now I just need to finish adhering it, and then I'll feel good about it. <laughs> okay, so let's close this ink up. Stick that down put my stamps away I could have put some spider webs on it too and maybe um, I'm happy with what's on it there's not much on it and with all that's going on everywhere else it's gonna be great okay so stick that down now I do want to adhere at least one area in each corner and I'm not going to use liquid glue because that is just a recipe for disaster. I am so happy. Lots of work. Yes, lots of work. Also, I think because I am thinking this through with you as well, it's <laughs> Yes. So, I will explain that in just a second. I think because I'm working through this live in front of you all you're seeing all of the extra work that goes into the design process so i'm thinking if any of you want to make this card it's not going to be as horrific <laughs> as the process you're watching okay so let's i like that I also want to cover that up just a scotch. So I'm, I mean, I'm not going to be able to cover all of them, but I did want to bring in some um, of these, whatchamacallits, embellishments. <laughs> Sorry, like I said, I haven't eaten yet, so I'm like a little hungry and my brain is not running on all cylinders here. I deserve a good dinner. I don't know what I'm going to eat. I literally think I might just eat um, peanut butter and jelly. Wow. I'm like, what is that called again? I had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich the other day, and it just, like, really, really um, hit the spot. So we're going to put one of these down here, too. I'm also going to take a little bit of the stick off with my finger. Oh, that didn't make a difference. Oh, my God. Don't stick it quite so thick okay so let's see here julie yes i am chris's first cousin and we have been in business together for probably i don't know three or four years maybe i helped design her logo way back in the day and um i love making cards and we have always kind of worked um well together so we've bounced ideas off of each other and um I went to school for marketing so I just I don't know I've always liked kind of I don't know running on her coattails sometimes I feel like that gets a co negative connotation but we love doing this together um we love working collaboratively she does so, 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 so much more of the work for Cards by Christine than I do. Um, but I do a Technique Thursday every week and I do the Paper Pumpkin Alternative once a month. And I used to do, mm, I don't know, I used to do a couple more things. I do have a full-time job, um, so it's hard for me to dedicate 
as much to Cards by Christine as she does. And also, you know, she is Christine. So that is why it is her namesake. But I love being kind of sometimes her substitute teacher. And sometimes um, I get to just do some of the funsy stuff. Oh my God. I did it. I don't love where that is. But let's see here. Maybe I can come up with an alternative spot for it quickly. I don't think I can. I'm thinking down here, but I don't like it down there either. But here is the alternative. <laughs> oh my goodness. So it is an accordion style card with a million layers. Oops, I should get it like in the screen. Oh, I can't wait for Chris to see it. She's going to love it. And I want to put some Stella on it because you know what? They're just it is a gourmet card, Hilda Nell. You got that right. I'm just going to put just a little bit of Stella, not on all of the things. And we got through it in about an hour, maybe even just a little less. Yes. Oh, my God. So that's where I was going to. I do have two boys as well. Um, so I don't, I get to just play with cards. I, I don't do it as my um, full-time anything, but it is so much fun. All right, there you have it. That is our alternative Mac Daddy card for you. <laughs> oh, it really kind of like exhausted me. <laughs> Did it exhaust anyone else? Like, oh my God, that took a lot of brain power. And I have a lot of mess to clean up too. Okay, so while I clean up, I am gonna lay that there. I'm gonna pull these guys into here as well. I just love, 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 loved the um, die cut, not die cut, laser cut element here. And I knew that that is what I wanted to focus my alternative on. So thank you for letting me pull that together for you because I loved it so much. And thank you for all of the inspiration and kind words as I was like fumbling through it. I'll show it off one more time right at the end when I have this all done. But I need to do a little bit of picking up to get my hedge space back clear so I can finish it up with you guys. Basic black. I need to just put a couple more things away and then we will pull her back together. Okay, I'm so happy. This was living in my head for the last couple of hours and now it exists. Okay, also, I'm going to go through roll call. I forgot to do that at the beginning of class, which would have been great. But thank you to all of our Paper Pumpkin subscribers who got the October kit. We have Lynn Beasley. Please comment if you were watching along with us. We would love to know who hung out with us tonight. And I'm going to do a random number generator of one through 17 to see who wins the prize. So Lynn Beasley, Amy Ponce, Barb Johnson, Laura Wood, Tracy Gruby, Jolene Schrei, Elaine Carlton, Elaine Rebeck, Angela Cundelson, Lori Kaiser, Brenda Crudweg, Terry Lackery, Patricia Williger, Deborah Schultz, Patty Robinson, Deborah Ryan, and Helen Chase. So, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Judy. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who um, participated with us tonight. Just going to throw some of the scrappies away. <laughs> and then I'm gonna do a random number generator. I am so proud of myself that I don't usually do Mac Daddy cards, um, as Chris calls them. Um, so this is a little outside of my comfort zone, but it was so fun to do. And let me grab my phone so I can let you know who our lucky ducky winner is tonight. So, we've got 17 subscribers. Ah, thank you for joining us, Barb. All right. So, let's get a random number generator. 
All right, so one through 17. And our winner is number one. I don't know that I've ever done a random random number generator where number one was the winner. So Lynn Beasley, you are our lucky winner. I will let Chris know and she will pop you a prize with your next order or your next card kits, or if you're not a very um, regular subscriber, we'll just throw it in the mail. Let's see if I can get the scale on, I'm curious. No. I'm gonna ask Chris to weigh this card because that thing weighs more than an ounce, I can tell you already. So, here's our inspo card, oh my God. And here is our lucky ducky. Um, beautiful alternative card. This card came from our thoughtful, tranquil thoughts. Sorry, I'm losing it. Um, there are a couple other beautiful cards that go with it if you haven't seen them. There's two fun folds in this class and I just did this for Technique Thursday or it's coming up this Thursday. I can't remember. Um, but beautiful cards here. So let me pull this away. Um, let me know, what is your favorite? <laughs> the automatic answer is the alternative card. So we're going to take that one out. Which splendid thoughts. Thank you so much. That sounds a lot better. Um, which of the treat boxes is your favorite? I'm curious. All right, and that brings us to the end of our Paper Pumpkin Live. We did it. <laughs> wow, I was kind of a little like, man, not knowing if that was going to come together. But it did, and I love it. So, I hope you guys all had a wonderful Tuesday, a wonderful Paper Pumpkin Live. <laughs> the spider web. Okay, I kind of thought that that was going to be the answer. Oh, excuse me, I have the hiccups. Um, I thought that was going to be the answer. This spider web, this spider web, this spider web. That's why I featured it on the front of this crazy card. Yay, so much love for the spider web. That is like a 100% accuracy for the spider web. Um, so I think that's everything I had to do tonight. I feel like I'm like not quite sure if I had to do something else. So if I missed something, I am so, so sorry. Chris will catch up on it on a later live. But I hope you had a wonderful Paper Pumpkin Live. I did. And thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for sharing it. Um, and like Chris said, we are nearing the end of the Stampin' Up! quarter, the Stampin' Up! year, the Stampin' Up! There's one other thing. Um, we're, but we're, we're nearing the end. So if you want anything, go ahead, place an order, shoot in that host code, and that helps us do everything that we do for you um, through the support of your, um, your Stampin' Up! orders. So I hope that you have a great night, and we will see you soon.